Hey, Joseph. Hi, Diane. How are you? Uh, I'm a little crazy today, but that's normal, I guess. So um, no different than last time. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, uh, this was no good day uh, either for us because we had a training and we decided, a Red Hat training, and we decided to do it on OKD. And everything works fine with OKD, but the operators are still uh, a problem. Yeah. Uh, everything is here, but uh, yeah, some always some little parts are missing. And if you don't uh, are used to developing it, it's uh, yeah, it's a hard time. Yeah, I I hear you. I think there's a bunch of work still still to be done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mute everybody here. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Get myself set up here for. Popping uh, back and forth. I know. This is the doc to add your name to if you haven't already. So I'm going to do that. And today is that. I don't have to add my name. I'm going to share my screen. And through this. Yeah, I think everybody is working at sort of Mach 10 today. So um, I know Charo just gave his head, head another, had to take the day off. And um, let me see if I can round up the other dudes. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Chrissy. So the good news is we wait for everybody else to do this. I don't know if you saw my screen while we wait for folks to join. Bing, bing. And if you want to, I'm just going to share my screen now. Um, and if you see more than you should, then I apologize because I have way too many um, tabs open. But um, I don't know if all of you noticed, but the code ready container is up. And yes. um, Carol yes. did that. We, and so for um, the training that you were just talking about, Joseph, um, mm -hmm. would the code ready container have helped at all? Um, no, um, maybe a short sentence about this. Uh, this um, we have organized a training um, over two weeks. Was uh, I decided to uh, use OKD but not OpenShift? Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, we like to uh, uh, see showcases for uh, service mesh operator, uh, OpenShift pipeline operator, and the serverless operator. I was able. It was very easy to deploy the pipelines operator. Yeah, it works like a charm on OKD. Uh, we also almost managed uh, today to get a serverless operator running on OKD. It's also very possible. Um, even to build uh, all images on our own, it's okay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the service mesh, uh, yeah, it was a little bit frustrating because um, it, it tries to pull images from Docker Hub that are not even there in this version, in the current version of the service mesh. And yeah, it's hard to find the repositories um, to build it on your own. It's a lot of reverse engineering. I want, I don't want to complain too much. I, I know, yeah, there is still work to do, but if you have a, a deadline and I'm, yeah, it's my own fault, yeah, because I decided to use OKD and, but yeah, I want to see that. Um, we are short before getting it running. Our plan B is to mirror the Red Hat uh, the service mesh operator from the Red Hat registry. It's our plan B for this okay. workshop. 
Don't worry about complaining, Joseph. It's good. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't pay too much uh, to complain about anything. Okay. So um, I, I can see that uh, Christian has joined. And so I think we can kick this off, even though we're a couple minutes after the hour. And I'm going to make sure I'm recording. And I'm going to apologize in advance. I have not posted like the last three videos yet um, from the past meetings. I'm very far behind on that. I know I will endeavor to get that up over the weekend and do all my uploads. So um, other than that, um, let's rock and roll a little bit here today. Um, there's a couple of new people here. Um, and so I'm going to just show where, just sort of how we um, add it. If you can add your names into the, um, the working group meeting notes so that we can just keep track of attendance, that's great. Um, and let me just see if I have this. So um, we had asked to see if Clement was going to join and is Clement on the call? That was the him here it doesn't look like it um i can ping him on slack maybe he has uh maybe he can join maybe join if, if see let's see if we can we've been trying um to get the container sig the fedora container sig um folks um re-kicked off or rebooted with some help um so that's there so if we can do that um, so this is the page that we use for running um the agenda and so if you have other ones um, Does it make sense to clear that up a little bit? Because I think a few uh, say at least uh, tickets are um, already uh, solved. Just to just to get the overview or keep the overview. Okay, just just an idea. Could you say, could you repeat that? Sorry, someone just interrupted my train of thought. I was uh, asking if maybe it makes sense to clean up this board a little bit because we have lots, lots of tasks that already are um, accomplished. Done. Yeah, no, we can definitely do that. So this, this just one column was the things that I used to drive through the stuff. So um, if there's things that we can take off today, let's let's do that. And then these are just notes and things that we were doing, so we can we can hide those boards as well. So. Um, yeah, that's ha I'm happy to do that, Joseph. Um, do you want to give a quick update, um, Christian, on um, OKD4 and any work that's going on? Uh, I don't really have anything concrete to show. Um, I think uh, Vadim has cut a new release. And yeah, other than that, there's no, no, no measurable progress on any of our stories. Um, so we're still having some some problems with uh, delivering the Windows machine config operator, which we kind of want to use as a template for all the other operators to deliver to um, yeah to, to an open source or community catalog uh, of operators. I do hope that will be solved rather soon. So hopefully next time we will kind of have have that template. How how do we deliver all of our operators to OKD as well? Really. Cool. So there is yeah, the, there's one issue. The, the operator hub still uses the older format uh, for, for catalogs, um, while we internally already use the new one. And there is an open issue I'm kind of tracking, um, because I think it'll be easier for the teams that work on those operators to just have one, one way of uh, distributing them, one kind of release uh, tooling they use uh, instead of doing it the old way and then uh, migrating that to the new way once Operator Hub does it too. Um, it's been in, in yeah, the, the issue has been open for a bit, so I hope they they get to it soon on the Operator Hub side. Do you have any idea yeah, what's holding that up? I'm not sure. Um, I, I can uh, find the issue real quick. It's, yeah, I'm not sure what's the, what's the wait here. Um, I see. Uh, yeah, if you could throw the issue on um, in the chat, that would be great. Is that an issue for Operator Hub I/O, the the external one, or Operator Hub internal to OpenShift? Uh, it's the external one, I think. Um, yeah. So I will uh, I will try to find that issue. I yeah, I'll have to dig for the link. Um, I am seeing Clément has joined now. 
Okay. So maybe we can uh, hey. tackle that first. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was looking for the blue gene link. <laughs> So you um, so just to finish up that one, if you can find the link to the operatorhub.io um, request, there um, there aren't as many eyeballs on that as there were previously, um, because I think they're mostly focusing on the CNCF side of things, SDK and OLM, um, and sh shoot that to me, and I will try and um, get that wrangled um, in the next week or so. Um, I I didn't see that one, so apologies. Um, all right, so. Welcome, Clement. We have um, been talking about you, so your ears must be burning, and we've been talking about you <laughs> off and on for a month or so. So wow. um, we wanted to give you, or maybe more than that, um, we, we haven't been able to connect as a community with um, the Fedora container SIG in a real way, so I kind of wanted to have a little, take a little time today to talk about what the goals and the mission of the Fedora container SIG is, and um, you know, where, where you see us helping out. So I wanted to give you guys the floor uh, to do that and then people can ask you questions. Yeah, so um, I see Bruce that was uh, there when we had um, pretty much just after Nest, so I think uh, end of August or on that time, we, we met uh, to discuss kind of restarting the container SIG uh, because it was started like two years ago or so um, and we had like a good start but still things fell off a bit uh, like people got uh, other priorities and uh, we did have like a, a strong um, a strong commitment of uh, people that could uh, dedicate some time to to help there uh, and pretty much we came up when we met uh, we came up with like three main uh, goals the first one I think that's the main priority for the SIG is the Fedora base uh, container image. So the maintenance of this image and making sure that they are frequent releases and updates and things like that. Uh, the second one was about uh, layered image. So the maintenance, making the maintenance of layered image a little bit, pretty much improving the experience there. And one that we discussed with uh, Bruce was about yeah helping uh, you guys uh, KD working group uh, about like uh, having you build uh, your images and hosting your images in, in the registry. I think really this you kind of come up in the second goal uh, because uh, if I understood correctly, um, you're really looking at building images that will be available after in the in the catalog in OKD so that will be mostly layered uh, layered images um, and unfortunately currently the experience of maintaining layer images is not great the documentations are like almost inexistent <laughs> and I don't think we have many people working on that currently so that's kind of the 10,000 view <laughs> summary. And, um... So who, who is in the SIG at this juncture? Like, is it just you and a couple of other folks? Or, you know, what, what sort of resourcing do you have to do this work? Yeah, active. Uh, I think we pretty much uh, say like three, three or four people. And we're not like, you know, it's just, I guess, like most of you, it's like kind of uh, per time kind of activities. So, um, uh, my, me and uh, Vipul really dedicate a lot of our time to the base image, the Fedora base image. And uh, we have uh, a couple of folks. So, uh, Jakub Tsaika that uh, worked a lot on uh, trying to have like multi arch uh, builds and like enabling. I think he, he did build quite a lot of the open shift and uh, the pre before OKD, he built a lot of the uh, origin uh, images um, for uh, in the Fedora registry, so for x86 and AR64. Um, and we have another person that works on the OSBS project, so the upstream project that we used to 
to build uh, container images so on TOS 3.0 that is helping more. Uh, hopefully, it can help us more with like improving some of the process and if we need specific development in uh, in upstream OSBS to to enable some of the Fedora specific workflow. So yeah, that's pretty much. So it, it, it looks like there's at least one volunteer from this group to join, um, and I don't know why James is, is constantly, I'm going to unmute everybody, um, and James, you can put your camera on if you don't have bedhead like me. Um, <laughs> and so it looks like that, that, that James Castle, who's um, on the call right now, would, is interested in, in joining and helping, and maybe if we could get one person from this group and I, Neil's raising his hands. And Mike's yeah, I just have no idea what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I mean, I tried to join the earlier incarnation of the container SIG a couple of years ago when it was first being started up, but, and I did a lot of the early reviews for most of the initial images, but, mm -hmm. but like, I have no idea how to do anything. And that's sort of, that's sort of been the problem. Yeah. Um, and I think that still a lot of the, so a lot of the, Fundamental issues we have are still things that have that needs a lot of specific knowledge. For example, to improve the the experience that will require some development in OSBS or some enabling some tools in the Fedora infrastructures and things like that. And it's honestly not something that is even someone that is very dedicated and very interested that goes through the effort of learning the tools and like trying to understand things. Uh, unfortunately, they will hit a wall of like permissions and not having like the correct permissions to try to deploy things and things like that. So that's kind of falling back on me and uh, vpool. vpool should, uh, should have uh, most of the permissions there. Um, after there is, I think there is a lot of, uh, I think there is still value in you guys trying to build your images and like reporting what, uh, what doesn't work, what is painful, and also helping in the documentation on like, yeah, uh, how to get started with, uh, maintaining a container image and, and like, you know, kind of just go through the experience, cry a little bit, and every time you cry, open the ticket <laughs> or like uh, add, add a bit of add a bit of documentation. So I should just go ahead and try to make a Packer container, and let's see how badly I flub it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we still have like a few active maintainers. I think the uh, Python container is still the Python classroom container. I think is still maintained. Um, okay. Some of the databases are, are, are still maintained, but yeah, that could, so how, that could how, also be. Oh, sorry, go. No. Go, go ahead, Clement. Sorry. No, I, yeah, uh, another way to kind of also um, maybe quickly join and like help is to look for an, uh, an image that is already uh available in Fedora that is that is not maintained anymore and try to maybe pick it up and try to to build it and like see if it builds if it like you know just kind of pick up a, a old image what, what what's the process for adding a new image is it is it in disk git um as well the, yeah. the docker files so they're stored in disk git and the um creating a new repository essentially um how how does one request those is it the same as a RPM, RPM procedure? procedure? Yeah, you open a bugzilla, there is a review. We have a fairly, well, we have some guidelines. Uh, you kind of, you, you should be able to do your, and once the bugzilla is approved, you have your this git repository, and then you have a fed package container build command. Oh, then okay. you start to cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And and when I'm just going to ask the blunt when when are you meeting when are your meetings? So uh, currently we don't have meetings because uh, we just 
felt that we will see if we need them. Currently, we didn't really need them. The meeting we had was like, oh, I didn't have time to do anything last uh, couple of weeks. Me neither, me neither, me neither. So we were basically meeting just to, to say we didn't do the fact. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were meeting to acknowledge the fact that we, we didn't uh, have time to work on, on anything. Um, so we revived the mailing list all in August, and this is the, this should be the main place to have communication. And if we feel that we have a subject that is important enough to meet and have a video call or an IRC thing, uh, that should be bought on the, on the mailing list. We have also an IRC uh, channel, I think, which is maybe the most active uh, place where all are. Which one is which that? Is, is that Fedora, yeah. Fedora containers? Containers, yeah. I can put in the chat. Cool. So questions right. or things like this is the place to. So I think we um, have yeah, done, so. our, done our, our duty here. We've connected some dots. We've gotten you some volunteers. And um, so if we can maybe ask Jamie and um, who else is Jamie's? Thing, Mike and others um, to look at that and then just let us know back here in this working group when and if we need to do something um, or get our act in gear. Um, I think that'll, that'll help flavor the whole um, collaboration. And um, yeah, so. Do you, do you have already an idea of the images you, you want? Did you? Because I think we have a lot of. There are so, already quite a lot of the S2Is images there. Yeah, the the S2I stack seems to be like horrifically out of date, but yeah, that's 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 the that's the big one. Um, the other one is like making sure we have services pieces like databases um, and and things like that, um, things like nginx and proxies and you know basically all the little pieces people use to assemble microservice applications. Yeah. The, the usual yeah. basic things that people usually plug together to make operators or Helm charts or whatever for applications. Um, specifically, um, at least from something that I've been trying to poke around doing and I haven't really figured it out yet, is that there's been an ask for a little while now for Pagger to be able to run on OpenShift and Kubernetes um, as an operator or a Helm chart or whatever and like figuring out how to containerize the application and getting that running and having all those pieces. Like I'd like to have all that working with Fedora official containers with those with the latest software pieces, Python stack, um, all that sort of stuff. Like all the goodies that people tend to expect for this sort of thing and get it to a point where the Packer project can say, hey, you want a fully supported containerized deployment uh, for production uses? Here you go, this is the way. Because right now we don't but, have uh, that. I, I think, honestly, uh, an easy way for uh, you to get involved, it would be to look at those old S2I uh, images and just like try to like move them from whatever, I don't know, Fedora 28 or so to... I think they're on the Fedora 26. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so kind of removing, removing the dust and trying to yeah. build those images. And, and any pain points or anything like this, yeah, try to to report them and uh... yeah. Hey, this is uh this is Craig. Um, I worked on a couple of the S2I images, uh, the MariaDB recently, and the PHP S2I image. So I've gone through and made some commits to those to get them on the latest versions. And I was just I was really just planning to do pretty much everything that's in the OpenShift catalog and just go down through through the list. Is, is my current plan unless something else comes out of this call uh, that's a better a better way of doing it. I think that makes a lot of sense. It's just uh, painting, painting all those. slow, but it, but it is what it is. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, we kind of want, in my opinion, which is right or wrong, we want everything that's in the OpenShift catalog available for OKD, just the Fedora version of the containers if possible. Yeah, de definitely. So right now uh, with the with the containers we built on our Prow CI, which we then release as the OKD payload, they're all UBI8 based, so we don't have any Fedora based containers there yet. Um, we might change that, but that's not our focus right now. So 
for the like the non-core images, though, we definitely want to push um, for using Fedora-based images. So I think uh, having all yeah. the already existing containers updated would be great. And then as kind of a second step, um, looking into how we uh, deliver operators, which are kind of meta containers, they, they have this bundle container now that references other containers. Um, so yeah, if we could leverage the, the Fedora disk kit for versioning those as well, and then really having yeah Fedora-based operators, which are just made of, of, of Fedora-based containers, um, that would be kind of a second step um, after that, uh, which I, I want to do. So I, I would really want to get us to a point where we can easily develop operators on Fedora containers and also release them release them th through the, uh, the Fedora um, infrastructure that is in place. Okay. The, the, issue, the issue I had, and I, I can't remember if it's the PHP container or the MariaDB container. I think it was MariaDB, but I was able to get it updated and I think the code was uh, was committed to the repo and the test build worked but I don't know how to get it to the Fedora registry after that or how, how does that process work once you get a container that's been updated to the, you know say the latest version how does it get into the Fedora registry who does that or whoever maintains the container so yeah, uh, it, it was gone Christian Sorry. Uh, I, I, you probably know it best, so uh, I'll let you. Yeah, it's also relatively similar to RPM packages. You have to create an update in body, and you can select the your like Koji container build there. And uh, what exactly remember? I think it's it's shorter than RPM. I think after three days or so, it gets pushed. On the, we have a candidate yeah. registry where you can test things, and after it, it moves from the candidate registry to the official registry. Yep, that's. Uh, if, if you're following with this, uh, yeah, the, the IRC channel is a good place to ask. And, uh, and in order so, to be able to do that, you have to be a at least a co-maintainer of that disk repository where the Docker file is going to be stored. So one thing that yep. is confusing me slightly, and, and maybe this is kind of a dumb question, but why are we namespacing the containers with the Fedora version? Uh, it's an historical thing that that needs to move, but nobody okay. did the Okay, so, so this is a thing that we, we want to fix rather than a thing that has a reason to stay. I think it's the first or second open, uh, open issue, the container thing. Okay. Yeah, because like I was a little confused about that, and I wonder like because I can't think of a good way of handling like people needing to upgrade the image uh, progressively if if you have to like literally change the path in which it is pulled from. And and I would hope that we would make it easier for people to just you know move yeah. forward. I think there's they, just a bit of work to do in the Docker file and rebuild the image, and that should that should be okay now because flat packs are not then spaced. Right. It's just historical. Okay, cool. That makes things easier. All right. I just pasted a link to the um, to the Pigur instance, which is our uh, disk git, um, and there's the namespace container in there, uh, which holds all the repositories for containers that are currently in the registry. Um, and yeah, if, if you want to own a container um, or help building one, it's probably best to, uh, if you want to get involved, to reach out to the current maintainers, um, especially if they haven't been um, actively pushing updates, and ask uh, for for you to become a co-maintainer on that repository so you can push your own uh, updates there. Right. So. Uh, one ask I, I have, and I, I will go ahead and, and also uh, contribute to to this with some containers, but um, if we can get the steps needed uh, documented, really for dummies, for people that, had, that have absolutely no prior knowledge, um, that'd be great. If you could kind of, if you do that, jot down the steps you're taking here, um, and then we can kind of uh, hopefully build up a, a documentation around this uh, to make it easier for new people. Who join us here. 
So Bruce waving his hands, was he volunteering to write that or just wanting it? Uh, no, just being a dummy. Okay, well. <laughs> I mean, now, now that we're essentially getting into um, the process, uh, the same process that's also used for RPMs, which is, um, and everybody knows that, no, no, there's no happy packagers um, in in Fedora. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a, a little bit annoying to work with diskit um, and code. And it's and, it's well, it's definitely worse in the container alone, so it's not right. Okay, well, if if you get the, uh, so. Clement, are you going to take on writing up the the instructions, or you need? Yeah. Um, so we have some documentation. I will I will review this and see. Yeah, I think last time when we talked with Bruce, I don't think we have a easy like you know, just uh, getting started with uh, how to maintain a container image or thing. So that's definitely something we we need and happy to to have a look at that. Yeah. Clement, Clement, do you know? If that's the same group um, as for RPM packages, like the packager group in, in Fedora, for RPMs, you have to be a member of that group in order to be able to, yes, um, so, to maintain one. Yeah, at, at the beginning of the SIG, we discussed being a container packager or whatever group, uh, but like, uh, we never had the enough people wanted to just maintain containers to like actually make this uh, like like the request and going through the process of creating a new group and everything like worth it. Like most of the time, the people that are maintaining the RPMs uh, were the people that were maintaining the, uh, the containers. So they were already part of the, of the packager group. That's one big thing also I didn't mention. Uh, you can only build containers from RPMs that are available in Fedora. So if you're trying to do a container for something that is not packaged in Fedora, that will not, not work. That sounds like an interesting roadblock for some of our containers. But we'll figure it out. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's a lot of work to be able to not to be able to build from non RPMs because we have to be able to provide the source of the application and yeah it's I know that internally at Red Hat they start to do it but honestly to deploy this in Fedora is going to be a, a lot of effort. Well, at least there'll be more of you and more of us. To work on it and figure it out, but I think the um, the documentation and I, uh, if you can put a link to what exists now, would be great in the um, chat, and uh, maybe we can figure out how to socialize this in an easier version, or and maybe Bruce, if if Bruce, you can take a look at the documentation and, and add in some thoughts about what's missing um, to make it simple. That would be helpful as well. Sure. Um, I know he's he's a teacher, so teachers usually can figure these things out and, and um, make it simple and break it down for us and see what's missing too. You know, there's we assume that people know everything it is about RPM and packaging and Fedora land, but uh, and don't re rewrite anything. That, there's tons of content on that, but um, yeah, maybe that's that's something that we need some better documentation and and how-to guides on. So because we're going to rely on you guys for some stuff here going forward. So, um, I, yeah, I wanted to, I, I noticed Christy was on the call, um, and um, I did look up your background. So um, uh, I wanted you to just introduce yourself quickly and say what your goals are, um, perhaps, um, from your, your side of the house. Sure. I'm curious what you found in my background. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, my goal, I guess I'll start with that, is that I uh, was asking someone if OKD was supported on power, the power, IBM's power architecture, and the answer was no. Um, and then I should join this call and find out some things. So um, I just kind of jumped in to see. Uh, and uh, so I know we have 
Kubernetes support for power. And then clearly, I don't know if you guys are aware, but we have OpenShift support for power. Um, and also the mainframe platform S390X. So my background is that I've been working a lot with containers on power for probably the past four years. And so this is sort of the, I got a lot of the Docker stuff done and did some like the Docker CI work and some other things before. Now we've sort of shifted between Docker and Podman and now OpenShift and it's just like everything <laughs> up in the sun. So that's, I might guess my background is just continuing. Yeah, I tell you. So let's kind of find out what we can do to help with any of this stuff. It doesn't necessarily have to be just only do power work. I know that the community needs lots of help everywhere. So that's what I'm here to find out, really. Yeah. Okay, maybe to give some more context, you, you may know a bit of that already. So uh, we have the CI system, which is Prow, and that only builds yeah. on x86. And we actually yeah. take um, CI builds from that system um, for our OKD releases. So for the normal OCP OpenShift release, um, those containers will actually all be rebuilt on another system internally. That is then x86. Uh, we have yeah, PowerPC um, and all those architectures there, but we don't have those architectures in Prow. So the real blocker right. is really that we don't have a system to build uh, OKD releases for other architectures. That's not only PowerPC, that's um, also ARM and um, the likes. And, um, yeah, I'm, not, was... I'm not sure how we can uh, kind of tackle that from, from here, uh, but maybe that's something the, what is it, the, the IBM Red Hat uh, Bureau for, for working together um, sh should maybe tackle. Um, yeah, j j that's kind of the blocker from here. We don't have a, a system to build these containers right now. We'd love to do it. Yeah, um, that would be great. So I, one of the new responsibilities that I have on top of keeping everything I've done in the past two years is that I am now a part of the multi-arch team inside of Red Hat. Um, and I'm trying to hand off the CI stuff there to somebody else, but I still currently kind of own our CI mission. But we do have... Right now, and this isn't going to help. It's just that we have um, the y'all's x86 CI calls out to this really hacky libvirt CI, so that the testing is done on Power, but none of the building is done in Prow. And the systems that you use are for that for CI are IBM internal, but the ones you use for building are Red Hat internal. So this is all very much a mess, as you said, as you're aware. Um, and one of the things we've talked about with our multi-arch team is that we are now betaing something. We we're supposed to have a different cloud with power, but now we're going to have this sort of power VS cloud with power. And we're betaing that this week with some customers. And the hope is that we'll have like a build farm one day so that it just makes it easier off the board that we can kick out and like have some Prow stuff. We have another Prow cluster running in power VS right now, but it's not going to help you again. These are all just like intermediate steps. So we'll work toward that. But um, yeah, today I learned that that is how you guys build things and that that is going to be another another reason why we need to get this working. So we can plug into Pro. So that's yeah. probably yeah. what I need to take away from this call. Is, is, there, is there a place, um, Christian, where we can um, perhaps log an issue for Prow to, to support OKD so that we can at least start tracking it. There, I can't even think of where I would put it um, in the- Yeah, me, me neither, because it's not, we, we have Prow already, but it's just, it's on the wrong architecture and we will need another public Prow instance, essentially, that is non-internal, um, which we can then use to build OKD and um, release from there. It has to be public, um, can't be internal and it has to run on on that architecture on PowerPC. Um, so I'm not sure who, who the team is um, that would set up an, an entirely new cluster or something like that. Is so it it's definitely not question? just the team that, that manages the existing cluster. Yeah. Is it out of the question to do something like kind of halfway with maybe Quemo user and doing having it pretend to be power so that all the stuff can run? Because I've used Quemu user with Podman and that works, question mark. And 
I would maybe expect that that might potentially a little bit possibly work. I don't know. We've definitely played with that with some projects. Like I got NVIDIA Docker ported to power years and years ago, and that was new. And they ended up using the Kimu user. And then when they got the, the kernel, I did the new flag to make it easy. They switched over to just, it's slow. And every once in a while, you run into something with some sort of a weird permissions or some sort of a fork <laughs> that like doesn't spin yeah. it off into the right architecture. So it's it's kind of doable, but you run into problems, and it's not speedy for testing. And etcd, I know, is really really expects things to be very very timely. So I don't know how we could try. I'm just trying to think of a way where we can get somewhere, because because right now we're nowhere when it comes to alternate architectures. Yeah. So can I just step back just for a second? Yeah, I mean. Just the the build farm that you speak of is that something that IBM is going to host, and or is that something? That uh, yeah, we. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we would. That's definitely in our interest. I think that we would host and uh, <laughs> see all of the fees that are because we even though it's blue dollars, like this stuff isn't free for us to use that cloud. So I think that's something we'd have to just. That's way above my pay grade figuring all of that stuff out. But yeah. So um, I, I think I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to park, not to park this and go away from it, but where um, we can put an issue into some Trello board or something, Christian, that we can track it for them. Um, I know it's, a, 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 it's above probably all of our pay grades, um, the conversation, resourcing um, another Prow um, instance somewhere. So um, I'll have to think about that and talk to uh, maybe Clayton and, or Tracy or something um, on how that. Yeah, it's probably at, at that level somewhere. Um, because essentially what we need um, is a few uh, machines uh, dedicated to this, um, you know, given to us by IBM or wh whoever um, that we can use to run a an OKD cluster on top of and then install Prow on OKD. Um, or we, we could it could be an OCP cluster, it doesn't matter. It just has to be public and then prowl on top of that um, cluster. And then we kind of have to uh, tell it to rebuild all the things we built for a x86 release, also build that for uh, yeah, for PowerPC. And ideally we'd also get that for uh, ARM somehow. But yeah, uh, one step at a time, I guess. Yeah, really. I, the the PowerZ team has been pinging me on a bunch of other things as well, Christy. So, it, I mean, we're, we're I'm glad to hear that you've got OpenShift running on it. So um, that that solves a few problems for me. So I'll probably reach out to you separately as well to talk about that. Yeah. The the PowerZ folks want some time at an upcoming on the stage on the upcoming um, OpenShift Commons gathering um, that I'm trying to to. Um, curate a, an agenda and schedule for. So I was trying to figure out how to fit um, a talk of some ilk around PowerZ and OpenShift in there. So maybe you could help collaborate on that with me in some small oh, way. Yeah, for sure. Like get on stage and talk. Yeah, I put my red hat. I saw that. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> thank uh, you. Okay. All right, so um, uh, yeah, so that's great. And thank you for joining and please come back, um, you know, and you know, we, We've got lots of chores. I think really the focus that we're really working on right now is getting those operators working for OKD first. That's really where we're focusing, um, trying to get that um, going so we can keep people like Joseph happy. Um, and also on the, the CRC, uh, the code ready container that Charo, um, we talked about at the very beginning of this that, um, that I cheered mightily for when I saw it. So um, enabling people to start playing with OKD um, um, locally and get it up and running quickly. So that's really been, uh, I don't know, Char, if you want to talk a little bit about that before we um, go on anywhere else, uh, the work that you've done. I think there was one last fix to it around secrets. Oh, yeah, well, I realized that it's when you run CRC start, it's going to ask you for a um, pull secret, but you don't actually have to have a pull secret. You, you use a fake pull secret. But 
it it doesn't work with the fake pull secret that we're used to using. It needs a, a base sixty four encoded, and and so I I provided that in the documentation. Okay. It cool. was just foobar base sixty four encoded. Awesome. And that works. I'm curious if anybody's downloaded it and run it yet. I was thinking that we might have to do more than just Diane tweeting it um, to get some feedback <laughs> on it. Um, uh, Diane tweeted it. Everybody loved it. I love that everybody loved it. But um, perhaps we um, could do um, uh, a bit of a, a blog post or something about, make, about its availability and, mm -hmm. um, and get that out there too. So um, Good idea. I'll talk. I'll talk with you. And and really, all it is is, I mean, 500 words. Here it is, yeah. announcing blah blah blah. And we can do that as a Google Doc, and then hand it off to a guy whose name is Alex Handy. He's used to being handed things off. So, oh um, my. and he will get. <laughs> that was a bad joke, and I'm not allowed to make jokes. So, um, so let's see if we can get that done, Charod, and get some there. And if everybody who's on this call could um, give it a try. Um, before we post that blog post, because if there's anything not working, we'd like to know before we go um, and socialize the there's a lot of it. I'll give it a shot on my laptop. I just upgraded to Fedora 33, so we'll see how badly it breaks with with that. Awesome. Good. Yeah, I've tested it on Mac and on uh, CentOS 8 Linux. Um, I don't have a Windows machine uh, anywhere in proximity. So. <laughs> Windows. I, I I am I have a I have a pit in my stomach that CRC will be completely and utterly broken in Fedora 33. Well, challenge accepted. I hope and um, go go break it. Um, <laughs> so so there you go. The other thing um, I mentioned and then Jamie, I'll, I'll ask your here. Um, uh, I just got a boff, a birds of a feather session for KubeCon North America. Um, for OKD Working Group, I haven't got all the details, um, but I made Red Hat pay for it. So um, we will we will have a, a space um, in the KubeCon pantheon of hundreds of other talks um, to do to to have a basically a lunch and learn session. So that might be if we can get all of our ducks in a row with the CRC by then. That'd be I'm sure we will. That's November 17th. Um, that would be um, yeah. That would be great, Jamie, um, to do a, a presentation for learning. And um, Bruce, who's over there, wave your hand, Bruce, is also in an EDU um, situation and is using it in production, I would say, um, for his classes now, too, so you can collaborate with him. He's over, he's a neighbor of mine, sort of. He's at BCIT, British Columbia Institute of Technology, um, which we all know and love here locally. Um, so yeah, that would be great. Um, so suffice to say, so if we have a birds of a feather at KubeCon, what I'll do is just um, probably make um, Christian and myself um, the leads on it, because you have to name people, and then invite all of the OKD working group members to come and join um, the BOF as well, and coerce one or two of you into um, talking, as I normally do. Um, so I think it's an hour, which is great. Um, and it will be um, on the on the schedule, so be helpful, I think, to present um, the the CRC and other bits here. And if there's any possibility, Christian, of having some of those operators ready by the 17th, that would be really, really, really I, nice. We are we are uh, working heavily on three of them, and uh, my question is, how can we contribute? Because uh, there are lots of scripts um, for uh, OpenShift. And I think they need a slight, uh, slightly modifications for OKD. Um, should we create a branch, a directory to get the PRs accepted, or uh, what is the best strategy to get our our changes uh, inside of that? Is, is this welcome or not? Are you uh, working on that heavily in the background? And if we uh, put a PR on that, it's overridden by completely different things. So if, if you don't see a PR on, on the repositories you're working on um, from our side, then please do open one. And I would, um, because we don't want a branch or fork much here, uh, I would prefer it live on, on the master branch or the respective release branch, probably best starting with the master branch. And then um, if we can kind of make, make those scripts item potent, 
um, somehow uh, maybe an argument or something for it to know what to build. Uh, I think that would suffice and um, each team will review it independently. But um, if we get one or two of those in and they, you know, they, they work well, I think uh, we can definitely use something like that as a template for all the other operator repositories that we have. Okay. And yes, okay. Um, and a second a question, if some uh, current images are missing, like for uh, example, the service mesh 1.8, uh, 1.1.8, I think, uh, on Docker Hub, um, how do we get them there? Um, because for sure we could uh, create our own repository somewhere on Quay, but this, uh, yeah, rather hacky. It would be so great if someone could, because there are images already for older versions, um, who one is in charge of for, who one does uh, create them? I, I don't understand the process. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, each team kind of is in charge of keeping those up to date. Um, but a lot of those community images haven't been updated in a long time. Um, so what we really want to do is introduce that process that that is going to happen kind of as part of the usual work. Uh, but we're not there yet. And um, until we can kind of provide the team with a template, here's how you're going to do it very easily, I would suggest you actually uh, create your own um, your own uh, registry uh, or repository on a registry and uh, push push them there because you'll be able to to build them yourselves, push them there. And um, yeah, you won't have, yeah, we, we just don't have a way to tell all the teams, you, you know, you have to keep them up to date and push them uh, to the to the registry. Unfortunately, that's not in place yet. Um, it's definitely the thing we want to do, but uh, yeah, for now it's easier to just rebuild them yourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, OPM is the way to go for the bundles or is there a different way? So yeah, that, that's what we use internally now is the new bundle format and I, pasted the link earlier here. The operator hub um, doesn't accept that format yet, doesn't work that mm -hmm. way. I haven't really looked into how the old, uh, the, yeah, how, how it was done before, um, but you can probably just do it the same way. It, it wouldn't land on operator hub, but you, you could uh, still pull it in manually or create a new catalog that references it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and this is, as a temporary solution in in the you know in the long run, we definitely want all of this to be on Operator Hub, easily available. And right now, yeah, we don't really have the. It has to be done automatically too. Like the new version has to be built and pushed there automatically, and we don't have that in place yet. Yeah, it's no problem. But um, I, I love to help, um, but um, I would like to focus somewhere and not doing uh, things twice or. Definitely. Uh, it, so I think if you if you have some ideas for the build scripts, um, that's a good place to start. And uh, contributions will be uh, reviewed by the teams. So you can also tag me on on the uh, on the PR, and I'll I'll comment or whatever. Okay, um, I do so, Christian. <laughs> you will <laughs> mention several times. Okay, thank you. Okay, so there's two things that are going on in the chat right now, and Charo and I. So. Did I misspeak by saying that the code ready container was um, the secret piece was merged or um, what is the um, status? No, no, it's all good. What what I was talking about was in answer to um, Jamie's Bruce's question. question about where the code was. The if you want to build CRC yourself. The, the the biggest piece, the hardest piece is the single node cluster. That code has been merged, and so it's just part of Code Ready SNC now. Uh, and I added some documentation to the README um, for anybody that wants to build their own SNC for OKD. Um, the the CRC binary build itself is still in my GitHub. Um, we, yeah. We've been having some conversations about a couple of the code changes, the, the best way to, to merge the OKD builds into the OCP builds. Thank you. All right. I didn't misspeak. No, um, it's all but, good. But I did see that it was in your repo, so that's good. Yeah, um, yeah. We're, we're just, we, we have to build them manually. So every time Vadim drops a release, um, I just do a new build for, for CRC and post it. 
um, once we get it merged with the code ready code, um, we're hoping to set up a CI system to do it automatically. Um, and the other thing, because we're getting towards the end of the hour, um, and I keep talking about this, and, and it's I, I think I'm the bottleneck for the recipes and the, um, the cookbook stuff. I'm wondering if I set up a call um, tomorrow on Friday morning, um, if we could just hack on that and get something specked out um, this week so that um, we can st we can shape something that's useful and, and maybe a how to add a recipe um, page um, so that people can start contributing to it. I'm not sure what your schedule looks like on, um, on Friday. I'm technically on PTO this week. I just okay. love you guys so much that I, uh, I had Hey, to welcome to the club, Charo. I, I'm in the same boat. Okay, so um, yeah, so and so perhaps not this Friday, but um, maybe Monday afternoon, my time. Sure. Um, I'll try and, and book a, a, maybe an hour, maybe two, so we can just we can just hack on it because it is a lingering one. And you know, I apologize, to everybody. I am the bottleneck for a lot of these things because, um, and I just have to hand off, um, you know, ownership of and contributing bits to um, maintainer bits to okd.io so other people can can add in but I think we do need to create a framework for it um, and some how to's um, how to add and you know what the goals and purposes are so if we get that done on Monday um, I will whatever we come up with um, we'll push out to the um, to the mailing list for people to give us feedback on and and get that done that sounds good Sounds like plan. I'm gonna book you now, and um, we'll see, Charo. And cooking, cooking school. So that we'll get that done hopefully, and um, yeah. So I think that's really most of what we had to cover off today. Um, is there anything else that we missed? Um, Anna was here. I'm looking at the agenda. Um, the CRC is out the door. I mentioned the KubeCon boff, um, and yeah, I think that's what. So uh, I, I have one thing. Uh, we're still not building containers for bare metal installs, so bare metal IPI is still not possible with OKD. Um, I think it's yeah, a lot of people are hitting that because we don't really tell that anywhere. Um, so a lot of people try that and fail. Um, as I think you were having a kind of a meeting or a, a session with the bare metal, metal cubed folks. They're coming up. Could you? Yeah, so they if, are, let me just, I'll tell you when, and I'll see if I remember to ask them that question. I think it's this coming Monday. Okay, because we really need uh, their input um, for yeah for setting up the builds uh, for those images. No, I actually, can... it's not until the nineteenth of uh, October. Um, okay. So let me rather than that, let's um, rather than waiting a month, basically, um, let me see if I can um, reach out to Pep and see if we can get him to come to the next call. Yeah. I pasted the link to the issue that Vadim had created again, um, and he pinged all the all the folks there. Um, I think a few times already. Um, yeah, okay. if there's any, if we can kind of uh, escalate that a little bit and get get them to look at it. That'd be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll get that one. And pretty much, I'm just gonna peg Pep tomorrow um, and see if I can get him to him to come or send somebody to do that. So I'll do that right now too. And anything else on your wish list, everybody? Man, I'm so glad I said we didn't, we shouldn't block on this for OKDGA because we would have been so screwed if we did. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. But then tra having trailing threads is never good. No, but this is bad. This is better than the alternative, but. I'm not even 100% sure why they have to use the rel images there instead of just UVI. It may be some RPM repositories they're using, um, but I, some of the images don't even install any RPMs, so it 
it's not really clear to me why they use those images. The art, the the art just use... doesn't know how to community. Yeah. If we could just use UEI images everywhere, uh, we wouldn't have the problem. Yeah. But, yeah. They don't know how to community. Well, makes me really sad. <laughs> Luckily, we do, right? Well, we're doing better. I, and I mostly credit that to, uh, to Diane. Well, it's all of you guys, too, so thank you. So I think that's all we have for today. Um, and um, Christy, I'll, I'll reach out to you because um, I, I have to get some Power Z on the menu for um, this next talk. So, And you're now at Red Hat. Um, you have a Red Hat email. Does that mean you're also in Gchat, Christy? I am, yes. Oh man! Wait, wait. She <laughs> wasn't uh -oh. right now, and she is now. No, I'm both now. Oh no! Uh, now I blue peg in. I know I'm on my like, teams. Blue and red. Yeah. Oh no! So that means you're purple. Yeah. You, you need to have yeah. one of those tie dye shirts that has like the red hat IBM like fusion right through with the colors and the logos. Yeah. The we should make those. Yes, I think I think we're gonna. We talked about that when we got first got acquired about getting purplish stuff, but uh, someone poo pod it. So well, anyway. they're they're not fun people. So do it anyway. <laughs> so cool. Well, um, Christy, it's great to see you um, and to have the Power Z folks represented, and and also to just have more folks here. Um, and I already pinged Pep for you, Christian, and I will book you. Um, Charles for a couple of hours on Monday. Um, so make your dinner and come to it because I think you're on East Coast time. So you might be able to. Yes, bit yes, I am. Lucky Charo. <laughs> well, Charo, and then, you know, once we figure out a little game plan, we'll just, I'll just open it up. What I'd really like to do is have a few more people um, uh, outside of Red Hat even working like. Um, Joseph has done some work for me um, on the OKD.io site and make other people able to. And you and I still need to work on some of those Fedora magazine posts for as we get everything rolled out. Yeah. Diane just <laughs> yeah. Well, now that we have the um, code ready containers thing, Definitely. assuming we can get that all validated out, we can just put all of that together in one nice blog post. Yeah. And maybe, yeah, yeah, that might be the way to do it. So cool. All right. Um, thank you all. And we will conjoin again in two weeks' time. And, um, and I will ch chase you all down um, via Gchat if you're inside of Red Hat and in the um, Black channels elsewise. <laughs> so cool. Thanks for everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.